Hey everybody, I think we're live. Let's see if everything is working. Make sure my bow tie is straight enough. You know, when you, you know you can tell somebody actually is wearing a real bow tie when it's crooked and the knot's quite right. Not quite right. Because if it's perfect, you know, we know that it's a clip-on, right? Or one of those where it clips in the back. They're kind of crazy. Uh, if somebody can give me a little feedback in the chat, I think I got the chat up. Can you guys see me and hear me? I think we are rolling. Looks like we're live, public, we got some viewers. I think we're ready to roll. Just checking everything here real quick. Yep. Yeah, no clip-ons. Loud and clear. All right, guys, let's roll. So first of all, if you take a quick second, it really helps if you'll share this. Uh, share it on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you may be. Uh, tell your friends about it. We try to provide some useful information, a fun time, and we're going to try to run about maybe 20 minutes, something like that, see how many Q&As we have. Uh, I try to answer a lot of questions on these lives. Uh, the Super Chats do help. It helps us make the questions stand out, just the way YouTube works. Um, so that does help make your questions stand out. And uh, let's get rolling, everybody. Welcome. I hope it's good weather where you are. It is beautiful weather. I'm actually kind of sad to be inside right now. It's like 65 degrees and sunny with a nice breeze out. I really wish I was working in my lawn. Who all is a lawn guy? I love working on my lawn. All right. People say I'm having crackling. Check your mic. All right. Let me check my mic. This is the same problem I had that last time, guys. Don't know why I've got the crackling again. We got that, we got that. I don't know why it does that, guys. Frustrating as all get out. Let me... Let me turn the gain down a little bit. How's that? Is that any better? People say check my mic connection. It's connected great. How's that sound? Does that sound any better? I turned the gain down a little bit so maybe I'm not clipping. I got a nice one. I got a really nice Rode mic on this thing. Only cracks when you talk. <sighs> Frustrating. Uh, no, the mic is plugged in real nice. I'm going to turn the gain way down. Maybe I'm clipping is maybe what we're hearing. So let's turn it way down. That looks a little better. I'm not clipping here. We're going to roll, guys. Put up with it if you can, and we'll try to do better next time. I have no idea why. Last Two times ago, the mic had problems. Last time, same mic, same setup. Didn't have any problems. Worked great. And now this time, we have problems. I got no idea. No idea. I'm a lawyer, not an IT guy. Today we're going to talk about chat GPT, if I can say it right. Let me get my screen shared here real quick. Uh, I didn't get this set up. I apologize. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about chat GPT. If you can see that. Yep, great. So there's chat GPT. Uh, let's make myself a little, let's make it a little bigger so you can see it. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to see... Try to talk telepathically. Can you hear what I'm thinking in your head? All right. So ChatGPT is this cool AI thing that came out a couple months ago. I'm a little behind on the uptake with this. But the question uh, people were wondering is basically, uh, you know, can this be used in court, right? That's the question is, can this be used in court? Could it be used on the side of the road to help you with the police? And how might things... Uh, how might it go? Is this going to put me out of work? I've had more than one friend or family member ask me, like, well, is this coming for your job? Are lawyers going to even have jobs with this stuff going? And so that's the big question here. Uh, is this going to put me out of a job? First of all, I don't think it is. I think people are always going to want a person to help them through, especially very difficult and stressful times like court, right? I don't think people are going to want a robot assistive device there trying to help you through court, okay? Um, Dust on the connector. Sorry, um, the audio is driving me nuts because people are still upset about it. Uh, I don't think people are going to want uh, a robot or telepresence device helping them through court. I think they're going to want a person. And so I think that we're always going to have uh, 
a need to have people help people through trying situations, just like doctors, right? I think doctors are going to have jobs, even though some kind of device or AI might be able to diagnose a lot of things. People like people. That's just the way we are, and I hope that's the way we stay for a long time. Uh, and here's a good comment on that front. Uh, let me switch over here. Ah. Legislators would just make laws even more complex to protect their industry. It's a good point. Um, you know, as, as uh, things get more complicated and there's... I was doing my taxes the other day with the accountant and I just could not imagine how crazy some of these tax rules are. It's just crazy how these rules work. And wouldn't it be so much simpler if we just had a simple tax and everybody pays X percent simple tax and everybody would be happier. Uh, but now we have all these crazy rules, and so accountants and tax lawyers have jobs interpreting the crazy rules. I think our society will only continue to be even more regulated and uh, frustrated by laws, and so we'll always need lawyers to uh, work through them. Um, so here's a good question. This is kind of what we're going to get to. Do you think judges would allow ChatGPT to listen in on trials and provide advice to lawyers? Uh, probably not if they know what's going on. There's a story that was in the news a little while ago. Uh, sorry, another audio comment. Um, there was a story in the news a little while ago about a, uh, I think it was like some kind of ticket fixing application or service that was going to have the first ever AI assisting a pro se person in court. Um, the judge actually f got wind of it. My understanding, I haven't followed the story closely, but my understanding is the judge got wind of it and basically banned that you know, being used in his courtroom. So I think you'd have to use it in a very uh, sneaky way. Most of the courts I go into, pro se people, if you're representing yourself, you can't bring any kind of device inside already. They were going to try to, in this case I'm talking about, they were going to try to use uh, the assistive hearing device exception for like handicapped people to be able to uh, bring that into the courtroom that way. Um, so that's, that's how they were going to try to end run the rules. And my understanding is the judge kind of put the kibosh on it. So I don't think judges would, have, excuse me, I don't think judges would approve of this if they know what's going on. So you have to have some kind of very sly, sneaky way to do it. I use a laptop in court to take notes on. So in theory, uh, if there was no audio, if there was just an AI running on the laptop and giving me advice based on what's going on in the trial, in theory, I could probably use that in that way in court. Um, but uh, I don't think judges would appreciate it probably. Uh, what I want to do is show you guys what how this chat GPT works. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to play with it. You can get a free account and play with it on your own and kind of see what's happening. Here's what's going to be cool. I think I can make it talk to you, and we'll see if its audio is crackly too. So we're going to type a message. As an AI language model, I don't have feelings. So, so I can't, I can't experience, experience emotions like humans, like humans do. do. However, I'm, I'm functioning, functioning properly and ready to assist you with any questions or concerns you may have. How can I help you today? Kind of freaky, huh? Kind of freaky. Let me try to make this where you can see the whole thing on your screen here. So I'm just trying to make it where you can see uh, what's going on here. That might be better. Okay. Uh, no crackling in that audio, so it's definitely uh, definitely my audio. Sorry about that. So what I wanted to do is kind of run through uh, a scenario. So help. The police are pulling me over. Let's see what the robot says. If you are currently being pulled over by the police, the most important thing to do is to remain calm and follow their instructions. Here are some tips on what you can do. Slowly and safely pull over to the side of the road and turn off your engine. Keep your hands visible on the steering wheel and wait for the officer to approach your vehicle. Listen carefully to the officer's instructions and respond respectfully. If the officer asks for your driver's license. Registration. So yeah, that's the advice. Basically, uh, slowly, slowly and safely pull over to the side of the road, turn off your engine. Now keep in mind, this is an AI. I didn't program this. I didn't tell it what I was going to ask it. I just popped on a, a new session and typed in exactly what you saw. So there's nothing, pre, no precursors uh, preparing the AI for what I'm telling it. Uh, I'm just giving it a scenario. It tells me to slowly pull over, keep my hands visible. I agree with all that. Listen carefully to instructions. Respond respectfully. I agree with that. 
Um, you need to provide your ID, which is usually true. Uh, if you have a question, you can ask for clarification. Do not argue or resist the instructions. Now, I disagree a little on number six. I agree not to argue, but I don't agree that you cannot resist instructions. So if an officer says, would you mind stepping out to do some field sobriety tests for me? You absolutely can resist that. You can say, no, thank you. Or if the officer says, you don't mind if I search your car, do you? You can say, no, thank you. So the AI is not quite right on some subtle important points right there, okay? Um, so then, what about Let's see what the AI asks. If I say the officer just asked me to step out, must I? If the officer has asked you to step out of your vehicle, it's generally a good idea to comply with their request. It's important to remember that the officer is responsible for ensuring their own safety, as well as the safety of others. I'm stopping the audio so we don't have to listen to the whole thing, but basically uh, the AI is correct uh, in this scenario. It's actually a good, good answer that it's important to remember that uh, it's generally a good idea to comply with the request to step out. Let me make this a little smaller so you guys can see the whole text there. All right, it's a good idea uh, to step out. It doesn't go into Pennsylvania versus MIMS, which I wish it did. Because uh, Pennsylvania versus MIMS is very clear that you have to step out if the officer orders you to step out. And that's what this AI is not getting. There's a difference between, see, I said the officer asked me to step out, must I? And this says if the officer has asked you to step out, it's a generally good idea to comply. It doesn't say uh, that you have to comply if they order you, but you don't have to if they ask you. There's a difference there, a subtle difference that's important, okay? And they, so the AI doesn't understand the subtleties involved. Let's see what we have some, we have a couple of good, this is a good response. No instruction to roll down windows completely. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I, the window cracking thing that people do I, it doesn't make any sense to me because if a officer walks up to your window and says, you know, I need your license and registration, roll your window down some more so we can talk, and you say, no, I don't want to roll my window down, all he has to do is say, I need you to step out of the vehicle right now, please. Uh, you know, he orders you out. Pennsylvania versus MIMS says something, says that you have to step out if you're ordered to. So rolling your window down a crack doesn't make any sense. Uh, so Craig Bennett says, uh, so something to note is your need to be more detailed with your questions, like at some point as if the difference between an order and a request. So yes. So let's ask, let's ask Mr. Chat. Uh, Mr. Chat GPT, does it matter if the police ask versus order me out? If a police officer asks you to step out of your vehicle, you may have the right to refuse the request. Not bad. Depending on the circumstances. However, if the officer orders you to exit your vehicle, it is generally best to comply with their order. As failure. It, it almost seems like ChatGPT might be watching my YouTube channel. I have a video exactly about this, right? That's great. The AI's, okay, so here's a good response about the AI and how it doesn't quite get things right. Um, the AI's advice is only ever a good starting point. You have to do your own research and validate. I use ChatGPT to generate code samples, and it's not a great programmer, but it's a start. Uh, it's a good point. It's sort of like Wikipedia. You know, when I was in school, Wikipedia was uh, kind of the new thing and kind of all the rage. You didn't have to look into these big books. We had Funk and Wagnall's Encyclopedia when I was a kid uh, at home. But you didn't have to look in those anymore. You just had to uh, go to Wikipedia and, oh, all the answers are there. It's a good starting point, right? Wikipedia is not always perfect, but it's a good starting point to get a, an idea of a subject matter and get some other ideas of resources where you might want to go. And that's where I think you're right. Uh, this Sam says, AI is probably going to be that way for us, right? AI is maybe a starting point to get, get your hands around something um, and then maybe direct you to other things uh, to actually master it, right? Uh, this is good. I need to work on my chat so you can, just can read the whole thing. Uh, we got lots of uh, rough around the edges with live streaming, but I'm trying. You guys seem to like them, so I'm trying to keep it up. Uh, this says, if someone, someone claiming to be an, a police officer says they have a search warrant to my house, are they required to show me the search warrant and am I allowed to confirm they are an officer? In Virginia, in fact, the law says they must provide a copy 
to the of the search warrant to the owner or resident of the premises. Or if they're taking your blood, they're supposed to uh, provide the um, they're supposed to provide the search warrant to you. You know, if they're taking your blood. So it depends on the state. Not every state requires that, but uh, Virginia does, and some some other states do as well. Um, let's see. Let's ask the chat bot. What if officer at my front door? Must I let them inside? I don't know if you guys can see me typing the question. There's the question. If a police, if a police officer, officer is at your front door, door you, are you are not required, required to let them inside, inside your home without, without a warrant, warrant or your, your permission. permission. Except in certain circumstances, such as an emergency situation or when they have probable cause to believe a crime is in progress. It's important to remember that you have rights when it comes to police interactions. That's not bad. Not bad right there. Uh, you know, you, you're not required to let them inside your home without a warrant or your permission, except for certain circumstances. That's sort of the legal rule, and it goes on to some other uh, issues. Um, here's where chat a GPT and my testing kind of fails. Um, so if you ask it something complicated, like, like how to plead in court, which is one of the first questions the judge would ask you. As an AI language, language model, model. I, am I am not a lawyer and cannot, cannot provide legal, legal advice. advice. Correct. It's, it's important to consult with a licensed attorney in your jurisdiction who can provide guidance and represent you in court. That being said, if you have been charged with a DWI, it's important to take the charge seriously and seek legal advice as soon as possible. Your attorney can help you understand the charges against you, the potential consequences of a conviction, and your options for defending yourself when it comes to pleading to a DWI charge. I think a lot of people would criticize and say, yeah, the AI is just saying hire a lawyer. Maybe it's written by lawyers. Well, hiring a lawyer is the right thing to do when you have a serious charge. <laughs> Uh, let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, let's see. So we have, if window cracked and doors locked, can't get yanked out without warning. Seeing too many people getting yanked and their natural human response was charged with resisting. Um, I don't think it's true. I don't think it's, well, I, I see what you're saying. If your window is cracked and your doors are locked, you have, you're going to know when they're about to try to yank you out, I guess is what you're trying to say. Uh, and so that's true, I suppose, right? Uh, that way you know that they're coming for you. But I don't know that I want the police taking an asp to my window and having to replace my window because I, did, I cracked it and I locked the door. And then you're also likely going to have an obstruction charge if they're saying you step out, step out, step out, we're ordering you to step out, and you're refusing to unlock the car or roll the window down. I think you're, you're still going to get uh, some kind of obstruction or resisting charge. So I don't think it's a good plan. Uh, let's see. Uh, L. Jensen asks, what would happen in the event that someone who isn't a police officer claims they are, are an officer and shows me a fake warrant? Would I be correct in assuming that I can check if a warrant is real? Well, y y it's complicated. <laughs> How are you going to know that the warrant is real? If a document appears on its face to be a correct search warrant, I mean, I think you're at the point where you need to stand aside and let the person who appears to be an officer uh, serve the warrant. I think you could probably also ask to see ID, obviously, from the officer, um, but I don't know that you have much other recourse other than that. So if somebody has what appears to be a proper ID, proper uniform, uh, and a, what appears to be a proper search warrant, I don't know that you have much choice but to comply. Uh, then, obviously, if later on it turns out there was something fake, then you got a whole other situation there. Um, I recently watched a video of an officer livid at a woman during a stop. Livid to the point it looked like he'd, be, he'd become violent. What advice would you give in that situation? Look, if an officer is getting really upset and really agitated at you, there's not much you can do. Um, there's not much you can do but keep yourself calm, right? I've seen this myself. Officers, frankly, kind of start things out wrong or something happens, they get upset. They're people too, right? And so we have to always keep in mind, and when you're in any difficult situation, how you respond and how you behave in response to that uh, can either de-escalate or further escalate the situation. So if an officer is getting really mad, I think the only thing you can do is try to stay calm and try to speak softer, uh, you know, try to de-escalate the situation. Maybe that's a good time to consider uh, if you can discreetly record the situation. But frankly, if an officer's mad and you whip out a phone and stick it in their face to record, you're probably going to agitate the situation. It's a very tricky situation, and obviously officers should be professional as well. Um, yes, audio is poppy. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. 
Um, this is a great question. Ink Papers asks, it seems to me explicitly invoking the fifth can provoke some officers. Is there a way to do it without saying I invoke the fifth? It's a great question, and yes, you can. The, the simplest way to do it is to simply remain silent or simply say, I'm not comfortable answering questions. You know, maybe a little more politely than saying I plead the fifth, right? And it's also maybe the manner you say it. Uh, I've said before on this channel, if you say, I'm sorry, officer, but my lawyer friend tells me I shouldn't answer questions from the police, right? You're kind of blaming it on somebody else. And you're trying to say, hey, my buddy's going to razz me if I, um, my, my buddy's going to razz me if I talk to you, so I better not talk to you, right? So that's one way to kind of invoke the fifth without doing it quite as, uh, quite as in your face as I plead the fifth officer, you know. Um... So here's a question about the AI. This most likely won't apply here, but the AI only knows things up to May 2021. So if there is any changes in the laws after, it simply won't know. But you can update it with new info with mods. It's a very good point, right? A robot is only as good as its programmers and as good as the information fed into it. So if it has outdated information, it's simply not going to be good and it's not going to work uh, well for the situation. Um, so Billy asks, can you refer to your AI legal app during a stop? Uh, yes, I don't see why you couldn't, right? But the question is going to be, how are you going to do that? Uh, how are you going to effectively do that when you're trying to talk to an officer? They're probably going to say, put the phone down, put the phone down, I'm talking to you, right? I've seen that many times. So I don't think it's going to be very helpful to have an AI legal app in your phone when the officer's trying to talk to you right there out your car window. Um, they're going to be probably upset that you're on your phone. Um, let's see what else we got. Thank you, Eminem. I'm glad you came, and we appreciate you enjoying the streams. Um, that's really what I want to show you with ChatGPT. It got some, it's got some interesting, uh, it's useful in a way, right? And this is only the beginning. Uh, it's kind of amazing what you can feed into it and what you get back out of it. Uh, I think there's implications for all of us to consider about our media, our news, different things we read and such like that, to try to be careful, to discern, is this, is this really accurate? I think you can do that with even with, though, with humans creating content, right? Just because somebody made it doesn't mean it's correct. So whether that's a robot or a human, I think there'll always be jobs for humans, though. And so I think we have to keep that in mind, right? Uh, that there's a market for smart people who can do good things to help other people and good customer service. Robots are never going to be able to provide customer service. I don't know if you've ever stayed in like a five star, like a really nice hotel. But if you have, you understand what good customer service is like when they're basically anticipating what you're going to want, right? They have it ready for you before you even ask for it. That's customer service. And sure, maybe AI could assist with that in a way, like kind of developing a profile for the guest and, and telling the hotel staff, okay, Mr. Felucci's coming. Here's the kind of stuff that we think he's going to want. But the people are what gives the proper customer service. Um, so that, I think that's where we're, where, where we're going to end up. People are always going to have jobs. Uh, Craig asks, do you legally have to put your phone down if you're referring to an AI app? Um, I don't know that you legally have to put a phone down if an officer tells you to. Uh, it depends on the situation, I suppose, but if you're just in the middle of a traffic stop in your car and he's asking for your ID and you have your phone in your hand looking at your app or even just talking to your wife or whatever, I don't think you necessarily have to put it down upon the officer's demand. Now, if he's trying to take you into custody and to arrest you, then yeah, I think you'd have to put it down because he's got to be able to you know, take control of you, put you in the handcuffs. So I think that's a different scenario. It kind of depends upon where on the continuum of a police encounter you are at that point. Yeah, Imperfect Xenial says, I agreed, I work at a hotel and AI likely won't replace us. Exactly. Uh, it certainly may uh, change things and you may change like how housekeeping is done, how you predict what rooms you're gonna need to clean or rates, revenue management, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't think it's gonna replace all the employees. It's sort of like how you know, we have self-checkouts at most stores now, which some of us like, some of us hate. Um, so there's still people, though, that have to help people interact with the robots. And so there's less employees at the checkout, uh, so there's less jobs, but people who are good with people and good with the machines still have a job. This is why I think one area that people need to really investigate going into uh, is IT and robotics, right? I think there's going to be huge markets for people to work on the robots and keep them running. Uh, can we have robot sue the cops since most lawyers don't want to antagonize the system they deal with? That way it's nothing personal for a lawyer. It's a great point. It's an accurate point. Um, you, you know, you don't want to poop in your own backyard, so to speak, sometimes, right? 
Um, it, I don't think any court, at least soon, is going to allow like an AI lawyer. But if you're representing yourself and AI is assisting to draft your pleadings and help you with like, the paperwork or the motions for the case, I, I'm sure that's going to be a thing uh, down the road, right? I'm sure we're going to have AI helping uh, people prosecute their own cases and defend their own cases. Dave says, you never take any roadside test. I agree with that with one caveat. Uh, there are some states, the number is seven at my last count, that do require the handheld preliminary breath test. Uh, I've got one here to get it out. But anyway, the handheld preliminary breath test is required in about seven states, not in Virginia. Uh, in Virginia, you can and should refuse every roadside test. <laughs> this is a good point. If they can get a computer to play on Jeopardy, anything is possible. I mean, you're not wrong, right? Computers could do a lot of things. Um, they can definitely do a lot of things. Guys, that's about what I've got time for today. i got to get back to taking care of clients. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping by and putting up with the bad sound. I will do some testing, I promise, before the next live, and we'll see if we can figure out what's causing the crackle. Um, well, I really appreciate everybody coming by. Hopefully this was interesting. And if you have some other ideas for future live streams, drop a comment down below still. Uh, and let me know what you'd like to see on another live, what kind of content you'd like to see. I'd like to do these regularly if I can, especially if I can get the stupid microphone fixed. I'd like to try to uh, do these regularly. So we really appreciate you coming by, and please subscribe if you're not, and have a great day.